There's an old song I remember hearing as a kid with a lyric which states, everything old is new again. And perhaps nowhere else is this statement more prominent than in our current entertainment industry. Let's start at the beginning of the decade now, known for its reboots and remakes. With the success of its live action adaptation of Cinderella, Disney has plans for many of their classic animated movies to follow the same path. Not exactly a new concept given their past live action versions of 101 Dalmatians and even an older version of The Jungle Book that most people probably won't remember because Christopher Walken wasn't in it. Yet this time around, these newer films are at least watchable thanks to leaps in special effects and other film technology. We were treated to a better live action Jungle Book. And of course, coming soon, Beauty and the Beast. I'm sure more are on their way and will no doubt gather a substantial audience. Unless you count Brave Little Toaster. That probably wouldn't work. Inanimate objects are just not funny. Say so this is what you get. I, I had a toaster for this whole thing, it didn't work out, but anyway. The last couple of years have also attempted to rekindle our love for those old school blockbuster films. Star Wars fans were blessed with two movies. The sequel, The Force Awakens, which shows us what Star Wars would have been like all along without Darth Vader. And a prequel to A New Hope, Star Wars Rogue One, which really doesn't take off until we see Darth Vader. Bottom line, folks, it's all about Darth Vader. So you Darth Maul fans can stop writing me angry, threatening letters now. Thank you very much. We seem to be in a period of nostalgia, and it has clearly spread through the industry. Over in the Land of Dinosaurs, we were given the fourth Jurassic Park movie, Jurassic World which washes the bad taste of the second and third movie from our mouths, but then dirties it again with some lousy Bryce there Dallas Howard acting, generic story, evil B.D. Wong, but hey, at least there was that T-Rex crazy Frankenstein dinosaur fight, Chris Pratt riding a motorcycle with a bunch of raptors, a great white shark getting eaten by a Mazazaz, Moses, Moses, Uncle Moses, whatever the hell, it is, whatever it is. It makes the whole thing worth watching. And of course, 20 years in the making, we finally saw the return of those aliens that love to blow up American monuments and Independence Day resurgence. Which will take me at least another 20 years to forget that I ever saw that piece of garbage. Spoiler alert, that movie is really terrible. Seriously, Will Smith's character dies while testing out a new plane or something. How, how, that's how you write off that character, really? The guy that instantly takes to flying an alien ship and masters alien technology with like 15 minutes, like 15 minutes in the movie? But really, that's how he dies? Jaws for the revenge's excuse for not having Roy Scheider was more believable. <sighs> And speaking of aliens, Ridley Scott is bringing us more xenomorph fun with the next Alien movie, Alien Covenant, which I hope starts out with a 10 minute apology for Prometheus. And it's also bringing Harrison Ford back as Rick Deckard in a new Blade Runner movie. Let's hope this Harrison Ford staple character lasts longer than Han Solo in The Force Awakens and is granted more dignity than his last romp is Indiana Jones. Over on the small screen, television continues to crank out remakes with shows like MacGyver, Lethal Weapon, and coming soon to a WTF near you, Chips. However, it's also brought back to life shows and characters from a time when television was both watchable and without any Kardashians. Mulder and Scully returned for six new episodes of The X-Files, which started and ended with us going, eh, oh, ah, okay, now it, huh, that's it? That lovable mother-daughter team and the Gilmore Girls are back to talk to each other really fast. And uh, I never watched the show. Full House has now become Fuller House and soon will be hurled back into the world of coffee, cherry pie, and backwards talking dwarves as David Lynch and Mark Frost give us new mysteries from the town of Twin Peaks. Which should also start out with an apology for Fire Walk With Me. Perhaps, maybe, someday, the world will once again embrace the return of that timeless legend, that holy savior that descended from the heavens to show us the truth, that supreme being that reshaped our perception of thinking and opened our minds to new worlds and ideology. I'm speaking, of course, about Alf. Until we travel in our way back machines again, this is Mark McCrina saying good night, good luck, and good God, please stop sending me your toenails.